Now, first off, I would like to say on this Sabbath day, all praises be to the Most High, Ahaya, uh, the Great I Am, in the name of His Son, Yeshua, and we thank Him for another opportunity to come on this Sabbath to come before you, brothers and sisters, to bring forth some key information according to scriptures. Now, for a long while, uh, you, you've had the Christian theologians teaching that one should not go into the Apocrypha, uh, which is the King James Version Apocrypha. On countless occasions, a matter of fact, uh, I think I have a 1611 right here. Thank you. Pass it to me, please. This is pretty old. I had this for a few years. But the original King James Version, 1611, which I have in front of you, Okay. Actually have the Apocrypha in it, brothers and sisters. And I know a lot of you have heard this part before, but I have to bring this out for the newer people who, who might come to the knowledge of the truth and may see us going into different records and think that it's outside the Bible. When in fact, this has been hid from you by the authorities, the Jesuits and the Catholic Church, who is really over all the churches in the United States and the Western world. They really control the doctrine of all churches in America, all churches in the Western world. So you haven't received the truth concerning what records you should actually read. And they have shunned you from reading the, any information that would lead you to acknowledging yourself out of scriptures. And the King James Version Apocrypha, as you can see, King James Version Bible, you see the word right here, Apocrypha. So when going into the Apocrypha, we're not going into a different book. It belongs in the book. It was there when King James authorized the translation in 1611. But it was taken out. And the reason it was taken out is because the, the, the Roman Catholic Church, along with the powers that be, didn't want you as a people to identify yourself in the last days with the Holy Scriptures. There's information and key information that have you identify yourself. And also it identifies the lies that were told against you. There was an agenda against you that the Apocrypha speaks of. When I say you, I'm speaking of the children of Jacob, the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the true biblical people. They knew it would, it would come a time of awakening in the earth, so they needed to actually distort the truth and teach you false doctrine by first getting you out of the King James Version Bible altogether. Now, they, the majority of churches that I know, especially black churches, you will, you will hardly find a King James Version Bible in there let alone an Apocrypha. They have switched all the Bibles out to the NIV, the New International Version, which, which publishers, whose publishers are the same publishers that publish the Luciferian Bible. And they made you believe that the NIV was the better book based on the fact that it don't speak old Quaker English like the thous and the thieves, and they claim it would make it easier to understand. When in fact, that is not the reason they switched out the King James Version Bible. They switched it out knowing that our people would begin to come back to the knowledge of the truth. You can't say that the thous and the these and the yees and the old Quaker English was the problem when our grandfathers and great-great-grandmothers and those who came before us read the Bible the way it was, intact, and they were absolutely fine with it. So why did they switch it out? They wanted to take out any physical indication of the people. They wanted, they wanted so that the people of the Bible would not, uh, would not be able to identify themselves in the Bible. They took out certain scriptures like uh, in, in the book of Matthew 18 and 11 where it says, I come to save them which was lost. In certain scriptures. All through the Bible they started taking scriptures out. But you would never recognize it. And on top of that, if they would take scriptures out of the regular Bible, then of course they would want to do away with the Apocrypha. 
Today we're going to show you uh, uh, undisputable proof that the, that the Apocrypha belong in the Bible. And on top of that, we're going to show you one of the greatest secrets hid from the populations of the earth concerning what happens to the spirit once it leaves the body. And you, you would only get this. All Christians and all those who believe in the Bible would know this if they had the Apocrypha. They would understand it because the scriptures in the Apocrypha leads us to the true understanding of what happens. That your body is eternal. And what they're telling you in, in, in secular education and, and, and other religions concerning reincarnation and all of that cannot be true. A lot of you don't know this, but reincarnation came in from the Gentiles, that whole ideology that you come back over and over with an opportunity to get it right. It's absolutely farce and it's, it's an absolute trickery through Satan. It's trickery. We learned that through, through the pagans. All right. And later on, our people began to believe this. A lot of you don't know this, but this, the Sadducees, which were a Jew sect during the time of Christ, believed in reincarnation. So that Gentile teaching eventually crept into our teachings through time. But at first, not so. But going back to the Apocrypha, why is it that when you go to your Christian pastor or go to someone who believes in the Bible, they'll say, well, the Apocrypha, we heard of that. But it's not scripturally sound because it's not spiritually or what they call spiritually inspired. That's what they're told to tell uh, the followers or their parishioners that comes to their church. That it's not spiritually inspired when it speaks of, uh, it's not prophetic concerning Christ because it doesn't speak of Christ. When it absolutely do, do speak of Christ, it even speak of him destroying the eagle in the second Edris. Him going against the Edomites at the very end. Him weaving himself a mountain in Edris and fighting in vengeance against those who have enslaved his people. It's all through the Apocrypha. But if they can make you believe from an authority vantage point that the, that, that the Apocrypha have no valid point or have no validity concerning Christ, then you'll just ignore it altogether. But let me show you that you don't even have a complete Bible if you don't have an Apocrypha. It so happened that a lot of you, you don't have to grab the 1611 King James Version. If you have a regular King James Version, just a regular Bible, you can go out and buy yourself cheaply at a Barnes and Nobles or one of those stores or online, the Apocrypha. You can buy these 14 books separate, which will give you a complete 1611 King James Version if you already have a, a King James Version. So you don't have to buy a 1611. You can have your regular King James Version and buy yourself an Apocrypha. And a matter of fact, this came from Cambridge University to prove to you that the universities know the truth concerning our people and know the truth concerning the Apocrypha. There's a, uh, another version uh, what from you got? Oxford University. Okay. Same thing right here. You see the end of the, the Old Testament, the book of Malachi. Flip over one page. The book's called the Apocrypha. And for those who have trouble reading the Old English, this is a good one. This is uh, the regular KJV English Apocrypha. All right. So to add on to what you were stating. The water. So the information is out there. Now, those of high religious uh, education understand what we're saying. But we're here to bring it down to the lowest term, to, to the layman, to the poor person, to the lowest person who would never have access to this information and know the importance of it. Why? Because the poor people are the next leaders of this earth. Okay? <laughs> Let me tell you, it's almost impossible for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. So they'll make you think you need to chase this money and go after the prestige, and, that's, and that is what gives you some type of, uh, of renown and, 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 and uh, 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 some type of uh, 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 fame within our society. They have made it backwards where food get fame. When really, 
it's not even about the rich. And it's, it's, it's about you poor people. They didn't hide all this truth from the rich. They hid this information from the poor. They know that even Christ himself came out, out of very humble means. He came out of Nazareth, which was the ghetto of Israel. So they fear what might come from the lowest of the people. So we're here to make it easy to be understood on the lowest level so that you can get the truth concerning yourself and the truth concerning prophecies of this earth. That's the point. So that now with this information, you can stand as one of God's children with the truth and do your part in this earth against the forces of darkness. So if one would like to ask us why we bring out this information, is it important? Uh, uh, why isn't we just teaching Christ or teaching Jesus? Listen, Christ is the truth. Everything is Christ. You understand? Yeshaya says, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And what does that mean? If you are teaching truth, you are teaching Christ. You don't pigeonhole them into some type of doctrine that they have created to, de to destroy you, like in the theologian seminary schools of Christian theology. So what we're telling you, what we're showing you, is being revealed through the Spirit of Christ. Proof that the Apocrypha is 100% correct, and proof that you do, you do not have a complete Bible without the Apocrypha. Let's go to the book of Esther real quick. The book of Esther. And I need you to, we don't have to read the whole book of Esther. Let's go to the book of Esther mm -hmm. and tell me how many chapters you have there in the book of Esther, Elder Lawyer. You got the book of Esther, chapter 10, and it ends at verse 3. So the book of Esther in your Apocrypha starts at, ends at chapter 10, verse where? Verse 3. Now, how many verses you know? How, how many chapters you know in the Bible only have three verses? I mean, they could have made that easy by just extending those three verses to chapter 9, right? So here it is in our regular Bible that they have told you is complete. Now, mind you, everything in the Bible is correct uh, as far as the, uh, the context goes. Of course, a few words that have been switched that you can actually go into the Hebrew and correct, but contextually, through, through context, the Bible is 100% correct. No errors when it comes to the context of the Scriptures. But we see here that only three verses are in chapter 10 of the book of Esther. Now, we're going to go into your Apocrypha and see if we can find the rest of those verses. I need you to get that book out there and I need you to tell the brothers and sisters out there the name of this book we're going into. Yeah. Matter of fact, let's get it there, but I want I want to show them in the table of contents here. Let me grab a highlighter here. Huh? I'm going to highlight it out so that they can see it. All right. In your apocrypha, brothers and sisters, you have the rest of Esther. See that? That's the rest of Esther. Now, I wonder if, if the rest of Esther is going to start with the first chapter. Of Esther. No? Go to the rest of Esther real quick. Uh, the title of the rest of Esther. It states the rest of the chapters of the book of Esther. Go ahead. Which are found neither in the Hebrew nor in the Chaldee. Part of the 10th chapter after the Greek. After, hold up, hold up. Show them that real quick. 